Her appearance with the cameras yesterday guaranteed her picture in the papers, even though he got his story. If a picture says a thousand words, a picture of a dress says a million. During her complicated life full of paparazzi and in-laws, Diana, Princess of Wales, found both solace and empowerment through fashion, discovering the ability to influence and awe the public through her style choices. Diana's fashion choices and lifestyle over the years inspired people all over the world. She caught on to the power of fashion. Who knew an outfit could say so much and made one very bold choice which created a timeless story of independence and female power. It's been called a revenge dress and considered a tongue-in-cheek representation of Diana's feelings post-split from Prince Charles. The truth is that through that iconic little black dress, Lady Di was able to reclaim her identity, her independence, and her personhood. Diana showed the world that she was still the woman she'd been before marrying into the royal family. But now, instead of being the naive and shy 19 19-year-old, she was armed with the wisdom and experience of a woman and mother in her 30s. That one dress became a symbol of Diana's empowerment after a difficult decade and very trying marriage. On June 29, 1994, Lady Diana, Princess of Wales, attended Vanity Fair's annual fundraising event for Serpentine Gallery in London's popular Hyde Park. For the star-studded event, Diana made a surprising dress choice that stunned many of the attendees, viewers of the event, and most of all, her husband's conservative family. The dress truly became a symbol of Diana's empowerment because of the other events that took place that very same night. The curve-hugging black cocktail dress was a custom creation by Greek fashion designer Christina Stambolian. The dress featured an off-the-shoulder dipped V neckline and asymmetrical hemline that cut above her knees. The dress also had a sheer scarf attached to her waist that wafted behind her in the famous photographs, creating an image of ephemeral beauty and elegance. Diana accessorized like a pro with a black clutch, dark sheer tights, a sparkling diamond tennis bracelet, and classic black velvet pointed pumps. Of course, the whole outfit was accented with Diana's signature short pixie cut of coiffed blonde waves. The statement accessory piece of the ensemble was the pearl choker with its sizable gems sitting at her collarbone. On the day of Diana and Charles's wedding, the Queen Mother had gifted the bride-to-be a Sri Lankan sapphire and diamond brooch as a wedding present. Eventually, Diana had the sapphire mounted on a necklace which she wore more often. It can be seen on her neck in many press photos over the years, including her her famous dance with John Travolta at the White House in 1996 for the Met Gala. Diana, now a confident woman in her 30s, was wearing the dress, not the other way around. The People's Princess strutted through the row of cameras and onlookers and performed her official duties without ever letting the cracks show. The dress itself was a bold choice for a member of Charles's family and had Diana still been under the royal thumb, the outfit choice would have undoubtedly been vetoed, especially when thinking back to the first royal outfit she was ever photographed in. When Diana and Charles first announced their engagement, she donned an ill-fitting belted blue skirt and blazer with a stuffy white collar that oozed the conservative style of her in-laws. While Diana was putting on a happy face and cocktail dress at the Vanity Fair event, her husband, the Prince of Wales, was busy appearing on a primetime television interview. Charles's planned and scripted announcement came through the much-anticipated broadcast and revealed to the world what everyone feared was true, Charles admitted that he had been unfaithful to his wife. After a year and a half of separation and many more years of unhappiness, the Princess of Wales and the Prince of Wales were getting a divorce. The two and a half hour interview by journalist Jonathan Dimbleby was an attempt to shield Prince Charles from the inevitable public backlash after revealing mistreatment to the country's sweetheart. The interview tried to paint a more positive picture of the royal crown. Prince Charles was seeking understanding from the nation's subject while being relatively open about his deep emotional relationship with his longtime love, Camilla Parker Bowles. Before ever laying his eyes on his wife-to-be, Charles had a years-long relationship with Camilla. The pair hoped to be married, but fate and the royal family had other plans. The most difficult hurdle being that she was already married to Andrew Parker Bowles. Even during her marriage, however, she and Charles remained close friends, often hunting together. Charles was even made godfather of Camilla and Andrew's 
son, Tom. In his interview, Charles also stated that after years of trying to make amends and get along for the sake of the throne and their children, his marriage to Diana had irretrievably broken down. Much to the royal family's dismay, Charles received little sympathy for his actions, while Diana, on the other hand, was praised for her strength amid the situation. In his later authorized biography, Charles admitted that he had begun an affair with Camilla in 1986, only a few years after his wedding to Diana. The Sun, a newspaper, published a photo of Diana in her now-famous black cocktail dress under the headline, The Thrilla He Left to Woo Camilla, insinuating that Diana's knockout figure and indisputable style were undeserving of being left for someone else. The dress, along with Diana's positive attitude, showed everyone that even through a very public divorce, she was still herself. In the photos from that evening, despite the fact that there was probably a lot going on beneath the surface, Diana appeared happy happy, confident, and in control of her own life. She was finally free. Who knew one little black dress could say all that? The night that Charles aired out their marriage's dirty laundry to the entire world, Diana could have easily stayed home, away from the public eye. She could have hid herself away. Instead, she put on a little black dress and honored her scheduled appearance, a move that earned her just as much or more respect than her husband's honesty. Prince Charles and Diana's separation in December of 1990 came as a surprise to many, but to those close to Diana and the family, they all knew it was a long time coming. Since their marriage in 1981, Diana and Prince Charles had had difficulty finding happiness with each other. Despite the way that the couple was portrayed as happily smitten in the media, there was often conflict behind closed doors. A large age gap combined with Charles' feelings for another woman drove wedge after wedge between the spouses. The couple would play the role of partners for public events and tours of British colonies, but at home, it was a different story. While Diana had a home residence at Kensington Palace, Charles preferred to live at his country house in Highgrove. Diana told BBC that they would do their engagements together, but their private life was obviously turbulent. Diana's marriage to Prince Charles began when she was only 19 years old. She revealed in years to come that those days of early marriage were extremely difficult, leading to extreme issues affecting her mental health. On top of the confusion at being thrown thrown into a world of titles and strict formalities, Diana was also dealing with the knowledge that her new husband was still in love with his ex-girlfriend. It was quite a lot to handle. During a candid interview with BBC in 1995, Diana opened up about her struggles with her health, anxiety, and an eating disorder that became a constant throughout her marriage. She told the reporter, I had bulimia for a number of years, and that's like a secret disease, and also described it as a symptom of her difficult marriage. In the early days of Diana and Charles's marriage, the princess made every effort to hide her illness and consistently denied it to the media and her family. When she did finally allow herself to be open about her struggles, she found that she was largely supported by the public for her vulnerability. Many people could relate to her story and found comfort in her honesty. In the same interview, Diana revealed that she'd known for a long time about her husband's feelings and relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. Well, there were three of us in this marriage. So it was a bit crowded. <laughs> In the new season of Netflix's The Crown, writers explore Diana's struggle with mental health, including the eating disorder she dealt with during her marriage. Actress Emma Corrin portrays the young princess and brings an artistic light to the real-life suffering that Diana experienced. In a way, the black Christina Stimbolian dress became incredibly symbolic of Diana's life as a royal princess because of how strikingly similar it was to the gown that she chose for her very first public engagement event with her new fiancé. In March, March of 1981, shortly after becoming engaged to Prince Charles, Diana made an appearance at Goldsmiths Hall for a charity event. For the evening, the young woman, freshly out of her days as a school teacher's assistant, chose a glamorous dress like those she'd seen on Hollywood stars and other high society ladies her age. In the tell-all Diana, her true story in her own words, she is quoted saying, I got this black dress from the Emmanuels, and I thought it was okay because girls my age wore this dress. I hadn't appreciated 
decided that I was now seen as a royal lady, although I'd only got a ring on my finger as opposed to two rings. All eyes were on Lady Di as she walked in wearing a strapless black satin and taffeta dress by the Emanuels, the same designers who later created the princess's wedding dress with its ivory taffeta and 25-foot-long train. Diana paired the dress with a diamond tennis bracelet. The 1981 dress was floor-length but slightly more revealing than would be expected of a royal wife to be. The designers hadn't anticipated that the paparazzi would manage to catch the to-be princess leaning over while getting out of her car. The movie star dress allowed the world to see Diana as more than just a school teacher. She was someone worthy of all the fame and power that came with her new role. For the first time, people saw Lady Di as a celebrity, and the press and paparazzi pounced, not once easing up for the rest of her marriage and after. The designer of the gown, Elizabeth Emanuel, told British Vogue that on that first night, we witnessed the birth of a fashion icon before our very eyes. What happened when Diana chose a similar yet more mature look almost two decades later was a woman coming full circle on a difficult time in her life, using fashion once again to empower herself. The decidedly unroyal, shorter hemline and slimmer cut of the Stambolian was the exclamation of a woman who no longer had heaps to prove to everyone around her. She could just be herself, a woman, a mother, a philanthropist, and a fashion icon. She could just be Diana. Although it's hard to imagine history playing out any differently, legend has it that Diana almost wore something completely different that night. Although there were conflicting opinions as to what she was originally planning on wearing, a Valentino ensemble was leaked to the press before the event, causing her to supposedly change her outfit choice. In a 2013 Channel 4 documentary, the dress designer Christina Stambolian said that Diana had purchased the dress a few years earlier, but that it had been sitting in the back of her closet because the princess found the figure-hugging dress to be a little too daring. From the moment that Diana did make the decision to slip into that iconic black cocktail dress, her style shifted from conservative approach with a modern twist to her own version of 90s fashion with uncomplicated, elegant lines and colors. Diana was a woman in her own right, and her position as an icon of fashion was never stronger. To this day, Diana's post-divorce fashion lives on in the world of both luxury designs and everyday street styles for women and mothers on the go. Diana had already long established herself as a fashion icon, often using clothing to make her presence and points known. This dress in particular, some speculated, was what sealed the deal on the inevitable royal divorce. After the initial separation, the divorce process went on for a few years, before at long last becoming finalized. Diana and Charles, however, quickly moved on and established lives away from one another. Charles began seeing Camilla in a more official capacity, and the pair eventually tied the knot in 2005, making Camilla the Duchess of Cornwall. The couple is still together to this day. After losing her HRH title, Diana continued to dedicate a large part of her life to the philanthropic work she'd begun under her title of princess. She cared deeply about her work in abolishing landmines, raising funds for cancer patients, and supporting the HIV and AIDS communities through her landmark AIDS center in South London. Post-divorce, Diana's style shifted to accommodate her new lifestyle, which was still at the center of public attention, but at least now she was allowed to do it her own way. Diana began wearing simple and practical styles, like the utilitarian chinos and white blouse she wore while advocating against minefields in Angola in 1997. On the contrary, for evening events and galas, Diana amped it up with elegant and glamorous gowns by David Sassoon, Catherine Walker, Versace, and Dior. After the official divorce papers were signed, Diana retained her apartments at Kensington Palace, where she'd been living for most of her marriage. The family also allowed her to continue using the jewelry she'd had access to as an HRH. Diana dated a couple of potential new suitors, but filled most of her time with the charities and spending time with her kids. Staying true to her identity as a philanthropist and passion for donating to charities, Diana eventually put the infamous little black dress up for auction, along with 79 other cocktail and evening gowns. The auction took place at Christie's in New York, and the proceeds benefited the Royal Marsden Hospital Cancer Fund and the AIDS Crisis Trust. The dress sold for a reported $65,000. Small change for a piece of history. Altogether, the dress auction raised over $800,000 for charity. Diana's life with the royal family has been well documented over the years, with endless documents 
documentaries, films, and books going over the triumphs and struggles of Lady Di. Since the moment she caught the attention of the press, she was beloved by the public, and her every move was carefully dissected, including her clothing and fashion choices. Even after Lady Diana was no longer the Princess of Wales, she maintained a royal place in the hearts of people all over the world. Her marriage and official position may have ended, but Diana will remain an important icon in history as well as fashion. The little black dress told the world that Lady Di, the people's princess, was not going down without a fight. Tell us about your most empowering outfit. Remember to subscribe to The Taco for more videos about powerful women and stars.